As we work to come out of the other side of COVID-19, a local historian is drawing comparisons between the current pandemic and the flu of 1918. In a time when World War I was a main priority for Bethlehem still, they kept manufacturing weapons and did so without ever shutting down from the epidemic. WFNZ's Holly Hare has the story. It's 1918, World War I is on and the flu is spreading fast, killing millions around the globe. Bethlehem is at the center of the American effort to supply the world's first industrialized war. Bethlehem Steel has the a distinction of being probably the largest munitions producer in the world at the time, certainly the largest in the United States. Jim Higgins is a local historian. He's earned his PhD from Lehigh University. He draws stark differences and some similarities between between the flu of 1918 and the novel coronavirus, starting with Bethlehem Steel. So there's just a beehive of activity in South Bethlehem. At the time, 30,000 people are working at the steel mill. Of those workers, Higgins says roughly 150 get sick and die from the flu. It shows that a community that pulls together is able to change the trajectory of this epidemic. Like today, many businesses like restaurants and cafes were forced to close. The only thing that mattered was keeping Bethlehem Steel in business and our troops fully supplied. Then that's just the cost you have to pay. Some no-name saloons in South Bethlehem, Pennsylvania uh, merit almost no mention and they have no bearing on the situation whatsoever. Mask wearing was even enforced but not mandated, though a crowd ban had been statewide. In contrast, 50% of the dying are between 18 and 40 years old, whereas today more older people die from COVID-19. If 100,000 people between the ages of 18 and 40 had died already from COVID, the conversation in your country would be entirely different. It's why historians believe that the past can give us tools for the future we just have to know how and when to use them. In large measure in 2020, 2021, our fate is in our own hands. Holly Harrer, 69 News.